Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, anti-vaxxers are often profoundly mistrustful of all institutions, and many now believe that the pandemic was a hoax designed to curtail our freedoms. A new group, which appears to have been founded last month, has started organising military-style training sessions around the country via a messaging app. Members say they want to plan for direct action against the police, vaccination centres, politicians and anybody else deemed to be complicit. Here's another new caller. It's Jane in Shepherd's Bush. Hello, Jane. Hi. You Hi, went to one you? of the you went to one of the Alpha Men Assemble meetings. Yeah, I did because you know obviously like everyone else, I saw it online and I thought you know what's this about and I went along and I wanted to see for myself, right? Go on. What was you know, what did as, you see? As everyone should do, isn't it? Well, as everyone should do, and go along and see for themselves. So I went along to see for myself, yeah. and um, I've got to be honest with you, it's the most lawful amount. It, like. <laughs> Basically, everything they're doing, they keep saying, they keep reiterating a million times, this is lawful, this is peaceful. It's the best group of men and women I've ever met. I hope you have a fire in and your it, belly. It, it, it's it's mother, time for it, action. Mother, no more effing about. fathers that are concerned about their children. So they're concerned about the vaccine. And I've heard you saying a lot about, um, you know, people, anti-vaxxers, anti-vaxxers and... Um, you know, anti-mandate, yeah. anti-vaccine mandate, but it's not about that. Tell it's me how they're issue. protecting children. I'm not. I'm not accusing. I'm just. I'm keen okay, to understand. So, well, well, what I will say to you, like, let's go back to, let's go back to the pantomime. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this pantomime thing that happened. Milton I Keats. happen to know the people that were involved in that. They're good people. Right. So the reason they were there that the media is failing to. Um, tell people about mm. is because there was a couple of families that got denied access with their children because that pantomime they didn't, they didn't have a vaccine passport in. they didn't get let in so these children had to stand outside upset watching other children get taken in mm. with their parents mm. meanwhile the parents were abusing the protesters that were rightfully protesting against the fact that families aren't allowed in it's called discrimination okay well you've got it's the, called the, medical apartheid no but it's not the, right no i i totally understand why you and many people feel like that but well, it's should we all feel like that well no because you have to think about the you freedom you can't discriminate against someone because they're black or because they want to be this sex or that sex why can't, yeah, but why being can black's not a choice, is it? Because they don't, not like, being vaccinated not is. It's not about It's not about being an anti-vaxxer. I've had vaccines. All yes. of us have. Okay, let's All call it anti-mandate. Right. No, it's not anti-mandate either. Oh, what is it then? It's God, anti another one. Okay, well, let me tell you something. Go I on. buried three... You said to the woman before, mm. um, have, you, have you known anyone with COVID? I haven't known anyone with COVID because they had to go on holiday. Yeah, but you're not. You can't link their deaths to the vaccine. Clots. No, I'm. I, I, but you can link it to COVID if it's within 28 days of a positive test. By the way, the guy that did the PCR you test. You said you didn't know anyone who'd had COVID. The guy that invented the PCR test died mis <laughs> suspiciously in 2019. I can't verify saying, this. After saying that you should, you can verify I it. I can't verify after that. How am I going to verify that? You that? cannot test for a virus with this test because it can be exaggerated. Right. Please do not use Let's this go test back. for a virus. Let then he died. Maybe I'm going on. You know. Can if you watch the language? Watch the language. I, I'm really, really sorry. Okay. I'm really, really sorry. I get passionate about it's this. It's fine. You could be dying. passionate. We're all passionate. No children died from COVID. And how many children have died from the vaccine? Look mm. it up on the government I, all right, website listen. on theirs. It's the a zero. The card scheme system. Oh, yeah, okay. Mm. From blood clots and heart okay. attacks, myocarditis, Let, I can't, I can't, listen, I can't, you know I'm it. not in the right place to be able to have a factual argument with you about this. I disagree Please with you, but fine. Excuse me for fine. getting passionate, but, but you need to I get will, out what there. I will if say, hold on, hold on, Jane, hold on, Jane, what I will say is, 
You're saying... Yeah, Jane Doe, that's me. Jane Doe. You're saying that it's unfair or more, it's, you know, on these poor kids who weren't allowed into the pantomime. What about the parents and the children who were in the pantomime oh, who don't oh, want to well, catch COVID them, from people who haven't been future? vaccinated? What about their kids' future, where it's run by tyranny, where you have kids to get future, 20 Because you can't go to a pantomime. And you have to show your papers. Do you understand? We're in the UK. Mm. These children and her mother and their mother mm. went into a pantomime that they'd pay for before Boris Johnson opened his mouth and said it was illegal. They'd paid for that. They mm. went there to go and well, see the I pantomime. Well, th- I don't think and he said got turned away Jane, they didn't show their papers. Jane, he didn't say it was illegal. If you actually look at it, that this government has been very hands off, as hands off as they can possibly be. Nowhere has it been said that is illegal. However, it is up to the discretion of the people who run those particular premises. And if that organisation who ran the pantomime at Milton Keynes decided they wanted people to show vaccine passports, that's perfectly within their rights as well, isn't it? It's their freedom of choice too. So after a call like that, I don't normally do it. Uh, Jane, or Jane Doe, she liked to call herself... um, (sighs) I have to give a little bit of fact check on this. You said, Jane, that there have been no deaths of children in the UK due to COVID. Uh, the last estimate was around about 100. But, you know, it's not an absolute perfect science, this. Uh, in terms of uh, Omicron, we know it's spreading. Um, 7,000 children apparently have long COVID in the UK. And again, it, no doubt you'll say, well, these, these figures are just nonsense and lies. But that's all I can do is I can go on official websites, on the government website, and say this is what the Office for National Statistics and the Department of Health and the Cabinet Secretary are saying. Um, that's it, really. I, can't, I can do no more. At this anti-vax meet-up and training session at the weekend... Social distancing, as you'd expect, wasn't a big thing. We got to resist. Yeah, of course we are. <laughs> the group are called Alpha Men Assemble. They have about seven and a half thousand members on their Telegram channel. This is one of a number of training sessions they've organised around the country recently. It's a mixed bunch with a mix of views. What unites them? A belief that the pandemic is an orchestrated exercise in curtailing freedom and that vaccinations are an instrument of super state control. So this group is called Alpha Men Assemble and the Alpha Men and the Alpha Women have assembled here by a lake in Walsall, just north of Birmingham. They say they're doing this to provide stewardship at anti-vax demonstrations, but there's also talk of direct action in the weeks to come. When you consider the, the, the Roman legions and the military, you see them all marching in a formation, right? One of the trainers, Gary Ross, is ex-military, now works as a medic. The group see themselves as being on the vanguard of a physical struggle with the authorities, a war. The Daily Mail had an undercover reporter at the same event. Off camera, Gary spoke to the assembled and said this. It's very draining mentally and physically this war that we're fighting at the minute and it is a war it's not a war that i was used to when i signed up in the military where you had two opposing sides this is a war unknown in history because this is a war being waged on its people by its governments the group produces their own videos which they post on the messaging service telegram back in december a member called samuel who described himself as the group's leader, posted this. Who wants to arrest a corrupt paedophile MP or a corrupt police constable or even a judge? I'm game if you are. A recurring theme is the damage they see being done to children in particular. We first met Alpha Men Assemble a couple of days beforehand when they joined others outside the law courts in Exeter. The case being heard inside has become totemic for these activists. It's a complicated, newsworthy case which involves local social services. The magistrate has imposed reporting restrictions, which is interpreted by the activists as us trying to cover something up. 
Matt, a builder from near Leeds, is an Alpha Men Assemble member. Be outside these places and let's start holding these people to account. We start with the media, we start with social services, we start low down and we hold everybody to account. The MPs, everything, it's all corrupt. The system is corrupt and we have to improve it for those kids. We have to. There's no future for anybody until this, when we're like this, until this is millions. And if we are not going to be millions here today, then we may as well all go home, lay down and let communism rule. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. let's... Yeah. Uh, Brian's in Dorset. Let's continue with this. Hello, Brian. Hello. You, Sorry, I didn't get your name. It's Ian Payne. I went, you went to... Hello, Ian. Hello, Brian. So I, I don't normally listen to you. Obviously, it's my, my wife had it on in the kitchen. And oh, I heard, so. good wife. We love her. So you went to an Alpha Man Assemble meeting, yeah? Yeah, Go on. I went to the Little Hampton meet. Oh, did you? It was all about, yeah. On the beach? All about. It, yeah, on the beach, hmm. yeah. Yeah, Go on, it, was, then. Um, it, was, it was a really good thing to do. I mean, I met some wonderful people there. I want to. I want to talk. I want to talk about the language that the group uses. You say they're peace loving. Yeah. They won't break there's, the law, and they're doing this for their there's children. A few, there's a few ex-military guys. I'm ex-sort of military. I was in a territorial parachute regiment years ago, mid right. forty years ago now. Right. And uh, you know, the, most of these people are normal people with families, and they're feeling threatened. I'm feeling threatened. Why are you, you feeling know, threatened? Because we're going to lose our jobs. We can't enter premises without being tested or vaccinated. The government are bringing in, uh, they bought in vaccine passports, which will, mark my words, become a social credit score. You're going to have your How do you know that? Because it's quite obvious. Don't you think that? Don't you think that there's that enough information out there? Every time you log on to a website or do anything online and put your personal the details, is, that that's the kind of is. a bit of kind of okay. uh, you know Big Brother, the isn't the it? Is, any encounter information is immediately censored. I've been banned off of Facebook three times now. <laughs> I've posted. Well, the last time was for posting Robert Malone, Doctor Robert Malone, who was part of inventing mRNA vaccines, who has also had both had two Modernas earlier on and is now speaking out very strongly. I recommend people go to Joe Rogan and watch his interview. It's three hours long mm. and it's very informative about mm. what's going on. And he's saying, do not take this vaccine. It is still can you, can you, can you, let, can you, let's, let's turn it around. Can you appreciate okay. why people like me have to treat such articles and interviews with scepticism? Do you understand well, why we do? The man who invented the vaccine. You're, you're sceptical against the man who he worked on the HIV on the HIV. No, but can, I, that, whatever the truth of this is, can you understand why people like no, myself? I, I totally understand Good. why people have become brainwashed. No, 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 no! Don't, don't use like, that language. Listen, Get, listen, sceptical. Right, let's just listen to me for a second, right? Okay, this country and the world globally have been subject to a psychops, a military-grade psychops operation which has dumbed people down, has stopped information getting to people, and if you speak out at all against this, you are immediately censored on any of the main platforms. The only platform that we're able to talk about this now is on Telegram. Everything else gets censored. Mm. And that's why you've got groups like this bringing up, because people are cornered. They, they've been cornered into this, because they can't speak. Normal science has a debate on two sides. OK, mm. this is a one sided debate on the mainstream media and it, the other side is not allowed to speak out. Well, I'm, I it's, haven't I haven't stopped you speaking, have I? No, it's because at last, at last, it, we're starting to get through to people because people can see that people are, have had enough. They've, they're sick of it. Can you assure me, can you assure me that this group, Alpha Men Assemble, a, a meeting of which you yourself have attended, are not intent on any illegal or violent activity? Well... There was no mention of any illegal activity when I was there. That's all I can tell you. And what? I went there with an open mind because I was doubtful. I thought maybe this is a control group. I, I didn't on the, know. On I the, on the message service, it says, I hope you have a fire in your belly. It's time for action. No more yeah. effing about. It, they talk a lot about, yeah, stand up, be a man. Say your thing. Say your, you know, speak your truth. And it's because people are too afraid. And that's what it's about. It's about empowering men. There's been too much of an agenda to feminize men. The, you know, the, 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 this is about just getting people to stand up in their own truth. And, yeah, we will protect people. We will self-defend. Obviously, if, if you're having something imposed on you, they, they've got mandatory vaccinations in Austria now, haven't they? 
if that comes here, this we will defend ourselves. Well, you see, that's that's the, that. The Nuremberg I'm Code. quite no, don't use Nuremberg. I'm quite it's happy. It's against the Nuremberg. It's against the Geneva Convention, the Nuremberg Code, <laughs> yeah. and the OBO. Code. All right, all right. Listen, you're I, I common law. Oh, okay. Autonomy. All right, Brian. Listen, I've, you've had enough time to put your views across. I hope you you feel we've given you the views, but I just as soon as I hear the word Nuremberg, I just think, come on. Think about this, you know? Think about what you're actually saying. The people on trial in Nuremberg, and you're comparing them to this? Come on. And when you use things like, we'll defend ourselves, what does, what does that mean? What do you mean, defend yourselves? Again, you know, you say you're losing your jobs because you haven't been vaccinated. I, I mean, it might happen. It might happen. I mean, I know it was Pimlico Plumbers, wasn't it? Charlie said uh, anyone coming. But, you know, but this is that's quite... It's quite rare for companies to say if you haven't been vaccinated, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And this stuff about vaccine passports, I understand. Look, very, very reasonable Tory MPs are saying we hate the idea of these things. But you must be able to respect the other point of view, which is I don't want to go somewhere where there's a load of people who haven't been vaccinated. Do you have to see it from other people's point of view? It's not Big Brother. It's the whole of it's the rest of us saying, well, hold on, mate, what about my freedom to be well rather than ill? Yeah. Suzanne is in uh, Westcliff and in South End. Hi, Suzanne. Yeah, hi, hi. Um, What's going on? Yeah, well, I think I think they're crazy. They are using just an excuse to, um, you know, have a day off work, to have fun. To you know, like Extinction Rebellion, just caused havoc. With you know, that, that, that's the type of this person isn't they distinction, are. Re the Extinction Rebellion. No. Extinction Rebellion. I don't. I wouldn't say I admired them, but I have no beef with them at all. I think what they're doing is very important. This is no, this I agree. is I, what verging I'm, on the sorry. illegal. Sorry, no, you you go. Yeah, no, I totally I, I agree with you. I totally it's illegal. It's 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 you know, <laughs> frightening people. But you know, and tarring people like me with with with, with the same brush because oh. I you know I I don't want the vaccine and I've got my reasons and that's fine. Been, I'm not going to have a go. Yeah, you know, I, I have been tarred with the same brush as people like them. They think I'm anti-vax, um, you know, and I I am in a way for myself, but not mm. for you know certain um, people. But I just feel yeah they are. So you know, people look at me and I say, well, I'm not vaccinated, and I've been had a lot of friendships mm. broken, etc. Have you had COVID? Um, no, haven't. You haven't my, had my, COVID my, and you haven't been vaccinated. I'm not here to tell you what you should or shouldn't do, but you sure, are sure. opening yourself up to being quite ill. No, I, I don't. If you I get disagree. it, no, disagree. I, no, disagree. Okay. My four, my my children. I've got four girls. They've had it. They've been vaccinated. Good. I've I've been I've isolated one of them. One of them had COVID. Um, I isolated with her, which I couldn't go out because I haven't been vaccinated. You didn't get but, it. You know, they're, they're No, I didn't get it. They're penal. Obviously, she isolated in her bedroom. Well, you, they're penalising me. You sound because, like a very you know, reasonable person. So you tell me, why don't you want to have a vaccine? Because for the last twenty years of my life, yeah. I've. The way I've lived my life, yeah. um, I've sacrificed certain foods. I'm, I'm really healthy with my diet and with my immune. I've made sure I've got a strong immune system. Hmm. I know if I drink a glass of Coca-Cola, it's going to really affect me badly. <laughs> I just know I've ne I mean, I don't take any medication. I, I wouldn't even take the flu jab. I wouldn't take any. I just feel it's not going to affect me in a good way. It, I, I, my body would. So you are it. you. You think that actually having a vaccine could make you iller than getting COVID? Absolutely. Okay. Without it, without, and I know my own body without a doubt. I know it sounds crazy, and people mm. are going to think. And the, but the thing is, there's, there's a lot of people who think like me, and in, but, but but we're being tired. So have you ever had a? These. Have you ever had an inoculation for anything ever? Probably when I was a baby. I had mm. no no control over it. No, of course. Um, you know, and, Did you have uh, a flu jab I, at school? We always used no, to. No, never. I, well, I mean, maybe at school when I was very young, but later on, you know, I, you know, I didn't. But oh. I mean, within my main adult life, but since I've had think, my own children. But do you think vaccines as a concept work? Absolutely, okay. yeah. I mean, my, my elderly mother-in-law, she's 89. Mm -hmm. My mom had, you know, I, d I mean, someone who's vulnerable, one of my children, she's got asthma. If you're vulnerable, absolutely have the vaccine, right. you know. But I mean, someone like me, I don't need it. I'm, st I'm okay. I'm fifty. I'm fifty-eight. Yep. But I'm strong enough. I'm strong enough to. F I know I'm strong enough to fight it. And mm. the same goes with my husband. Both of us. We live our lives. We have a certain strict diet. We're careful what we eat. Mm. We've tested our immune system. I've had. I've had vitamin D checks. You know, I've had. I've got a st as far as I can see. I've got, a, and I know if I have the vaccine, it would detriment. It would completely. 
um, upset my routine, it would upset my system, and I know my body couldn't take it. Okay. Well, as I say, I, I'm, I'm, I'm done with trying to tell people what to do anymore. I think it's completely up to you. Obviously, I'm going to say, and this is not just a medical family speaking here, but all common sense says to me that getting COVID is worse than whatever might happen to you with the... the fa- I think of all the... As I was trying to think what it was. So of all the uh, AstraZeneca jabs that have been given out in this country, God knows how many millions of, of that have been. 75 people have ended up with a blood clot. That is fact. Um, I don't know what... That's such a low probability. So here's... That, that's my take on that, is it's up to you in the end. I, as I say, I'm done with trying to convince people to have the vaccine or not to have the vaccine. But uh, you sound like you're aware of what's going on, and uh, I wish you luck. Let's go to Richard, who's in Hammersmith. Hello, Richard. Hi, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Slightly disturbed by all this, but uh, can you throw us any more light on it? Well, no. Uh, can you enlighten me to the definition that you just gave there? I didn't quite catch it. Terrorist, terrorism is defined as a person who uses unlawful violence and intimidation, especially against civilians, in the pursuit of political aims. And to your knowledge, has this group done any of that? No, but they've definitely used some threats. And who have they threatened? Um, I'll tell you. Hold on a second. A task team will be selected at our next meeting to carry out the group's first, quote, task in mid to late January. The nature of the action being planned is unclear, but those hoping to be selected are told you will need a cool head and you will need to control your emotions, they've been told. Uh, so does that does that necessarily not mean yet. that they're, not that they're yet. inciting no. violence or acting as terrorists? I'm not saying they're terrorists. I'm saying that if they are threatening some sort of direct action, what what does direct action mean to you? I don't know. What would you think? What would you? What, I mean, because uh, demonstrating, I, 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 uh, well, attacking that, the police, demon, maybe I don't demon, know, attacking a uh, attacking a vaccination centre, storming Ian, a theatre. Why would you say uh, uh, any of those unless you had a, your own hidden agenda? You're trying to <laughs> muddy, muddy the water. Ah, Earlier there's right, the listen, real Richard. Listen, right, come I on, come on. No, carefully. let's have this. Let's have this. What do you mean? No, no, there, listen carefully. There's my true you intention. Don't mind speaking over me. No, well, go for it. Intention. Well, well, earlier you allowed the, a previous I'm not, I'm going to, I'm zipping my mouth, on you go. Yoga, yoga teachers, yoga teachers, uh, she was uh, discrediting yoga teachers. They're part of some, what was she saying, satanical baby-eating ritual movement. Is that what LBC does now, promote that type of thing? Really? I mean, I, I, I'm listening to your show with interest, mm-hmm. and you're saying that... Um, this group, Alpha Men, Assemble. are terrorists. I didn't say they're terrorists. I asked the question, are they terrorists? And by the definition of the word terrorist, they could they're be. They're obviously not, then, are they? I mean, by your own definition, you've just explained it. So why are you going to such lengths to try and discredit a group and call them terrorists and associate them with satanic yoga teachers? Satanic like yoga teachers, I don't think I... Oh, mate. <laughs> Doesn't it, really? It sounds like you're just trying to uh, have a go at some people who have got together on a beach on a rainy afternoon to do a bit of what? Boxing Rugby and combat scrums? training. No, no, they're actually wearing boxing gloves and they're hitting each other. Are they? And what, and were they, what they're men and women doing that? Well, they? it looks like they're all men, but I wasn't there, so I don't know for definite. There's about uh, so 100 of them. you haven't seen the video then, Ian? Of course I've seen the video. Why would I talk about it? I, I, well, I, I looked at the video because you were talking about it so much, and uh-huh. I can see that they're quite clearly men and women there. Okay, so. fine. Well, you've obviously... Well, mine, I must admit, the video I saw, all their faces were blurred, so I couldn't tell uh, you oh. one or the other. And they were all wearing ah. the same black outfits. But they were and, all and sort and of... Looked, so they I were looked, jogging in in sort of formation so much i looked at their their channel yeah and the, the thing that i see the most repeated message is it goes along the lines of um no unlawful violence okay no how about this well how would you describe how would you describe this no, how, how no, would you describe this no on the video anything which is unlawful that's what i see all the time on, on the vi- what do you make what do you ma- what do you make of this on the video they say this I hope you have fire in your belly. It's time for action. No more effing about. Well, you obviously have fire in your belly because you're you're working, aren't you, Ian, for a company... Time for action. Wants, Come on. That wants, 
Well, you when you go when you go on the air, you, you have time for action because you are quite clearly very pro the narrative of <laughs> shutting down society uh. for what is a, a disease, a virus that has killed what? Officially, the government statistics keep saying five people out of every ten thousand that have. Coronavirus. I don't know what the official Five figure is, but it's something like 160,000 people have died, isn't it? Something like that? How? No, it's nowhere near anyway, that listen. number. It's nowhere near I'm that not... number. And Ian, why are you so keen <sighs> wow. to quote a figure that distorts? Why is your company so keen to discredit a group? And call them terrorists. Why is your company I all the time them terrorists, uh, Richard? Right? Why didn't you get two sides of the narrative on? I'd be all quite right. happy to okay. come and talk Listen, to you fine, about fine. any element of coronavirus, like I which say, is a pandemic. I it? very, very rarely fade someone out. I just have to, Richard. A, because I've got to get to a break, and B, because I, I'm, I'm spent. I, um, I've, I'm. I can't argue with this anymore because it's just, you know, like I said, I've explained it as many times. It's like two televisions facing each other and no one's listening. After the demonstration, the crowd marches to the offices of Devon County Council. Many in the crowd are part of the common law or sovereign citizens movement. It's an alternative pseudo legal system that activists believe kicks in when authorities are acting against the people. The movement has so-called common law constables, which some of the alpha men double up as. At the council offices, they quote, serve papers on officials, a dossier they've compiled about vaccinations. Well, what it is, we've got some papers to serve. Yeah, I'm happy to take them for you. Well, we've got some papers to serve the CIP. It's public building. There's proof in there with over 100 freedom of information requests that the coronavirus has been proven fake. Some of the people we spoke to at the demo had first-hand experiences of social services. Their mistrust of state institutions appears to go back a long way, which is part of the reason why protecting children is so central to the narrative. They are, as humans, raping us in every area. Financially, morally, they're splitting our families up, they're but taking our children. All councils. See, see, the government, the government are just people on the TV. These are the people carrying out their dirty work. So everyone from council workers up is fair game. This man, who said his name was Danny, describes himself as a common law constable. He says he's also involved with so-called paedophile hunter groups who bait alleged paedophiles online, then conduct citizens' arrests. The common theme is that state institutions and the law are not working for them. And that gives them licence to take the law into their own hands. Yeah, yeah, but you've got no power of attorney over him. You can't decide what he can... If he wants to leave, he can leave. You can't stop him. So, for example, common law activists have advocated for patients with COVID who are sympathetic to their cause to be removed from hospital. This activist filmed himself at a hospital in Surrey last year, quote, rescuing an elderly patient. A doctor pleads with the group not to do it. You are making him unsafe. No, he's not. taking his oxygen off. He's going to die if we don't put it back on. No, I'm not. Put your trousers on, my friend. We are going home. You are safe. And also this case in Ireland. A common law activist helped an elderly man leave a hospital in Donegal. Again, the doctor tries to convince the patient to stay. You're barely able to breathe now. We want you to stay to help you. No, Joe. It's all your choice, Joe. Yes. If you stay here, they're going to kill you, Joe. I'm very worried about you. And I want you to stay. I think he's saying something very dangerous. Joe McCarran left the hospital, but his health deteriorated. He returned a couple of days later and died. Let's go to Philip Sandland on this. Um, Stoke on Trent, Philip. Hello, Philip. What do you want to say? Hello. Hi. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Philip. Make your point. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, yes, <laughs> um, I think these men, these, I presume they were men who threw this statue into the river, should have got probably six months in prison for it. They weren't, uh, anyway, it's, it's a crime, a vandal. Well, they weren't, they weren't, they weren't all men, but you wanted, them, you wanted them thrown into prison, yes? Yes, yes, I certainly do. I think there are statues which I don't like. I think they're terrible mm. statues. Oliver Cromwell is one. 
that, that great lump of rock to Karl Marx is another. I don't like that, but I'm not, I'm, if, I, if, 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 I was, if I went and damaged them, I would be rightly sent to prison for it. But, 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 you, right. but what if... But, I think but, there's but, far too much yeah. fuss made about slavery. It was a thing of its time. What about all the slaves that the Romans owned? That they don't go smashing their statues down. What about okay. the statues the Greeks owned? And OK, you know, Philip. It, 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 OK. OK, Sorry. Philip. I mean, Philip, Philip, just that, that, I mean, that, OK, that, I'll, I'll leave that hanging there. Um, there's too much fuss made about slavery. Sunil is in Wembley. Sunil, what would you like to say? Hi. Uh, hi, James. Um, yeah, I've been to Bristol a few times. My son went to university there. So we've had a graduation at the Wills Hall and yes. other, other areas. And, uh, and I read the barrister's synopsis. And I think what the jury looked at is to say, well, it's not a crime because it was offensive. And, you know, if you interpret that, and that's the jury's feeling of it, you know. So if, if we take that to the next step, there's history. Can people tear down our history? And the answer, I, I think, is no, they shouldn't be able to do that. On the other hand, is should people be offended by that history? And I think what this judgment is saying is that if, if you have a statue and you want to protect it, that you should tell the fuller story, not just that Colston was a great man, but also at the same time... But he wasn't a great man. Well, in, in some people's eyes, in Victorian times... Well, we don't live in also, Victorian times. I know, exactly, we don't. So what we need to do is modernise and say, actually, you know, this is Colston, this is what he did, he, he built Bristol, he did this, but equally he did all these very bad things, so you have a balanced opinion... So that, you know, you've got the so you're doing a bit, I, I mean, a bit, a bit of both sidesism, a sort of Donald Trump both well, sides type well, argument. Because, well, you know, well, well how many people died? 19,000 people died en route to the Caribbean in America and a little lad of Caribbean extraction walking through a park in Bristol with his dad asks, well, what, what's that statue of? Dad, and the yeah. dad explains, and he says, oh, no, but he also built some schools. It's not all bad. Yeah. And you think the lad will then understand why there's a statue up there of someone that presided over the yeah. murder of 19,000 of his potential yeah. ancestors. Yeah. 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 yeah? yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, time evolves, and, and what we're saying is that history, you know, you can't change history for what it was. It was good or bad. But equally, you know, I think what a lot, what, certainly when I used to speak to a lot of the people in Bristol, they always say, well, they're not telling the full story. You need to tell... The other side of it, you know, and this is... I and you, and you, of course, you, you'll, you'll be aware that there were decades of attempts to get some sort of plaque put on the statue and, and they were all rejected. And, 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 and exactly. I By the Society of Merchant Venturers, no less, who later apologised. I completely disagree with you for the record, but that's the nature yeah. of a free country. We're, we're free to disagree yeah. with each other. So what would you say to, to that little boy who says, I don't understand that. I know he built some schools and, and, and gave some money to... Um, uh, the poor, but he that nineteen thousand people from our, 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 our part of the world were murdered. There were twelve thousand children on the slave ships. Why is there still a statue of him up that I have to walk past every day on my way to school, Dad? What would you say? I said, well, you know, I'm I'm of the opinion well, you know, you have to have a balanced view. The statue will stand, or if no, no. But well, why is that statue there? Because 19,000 of our people were killed by this man. I mean, would you put up a statue of Adolf Hitler for the same reason? I wouldn't put up any statues if I personally... You know, okay, I would you take I down a statue of Adolf Hitler? Well, I think that's down to... Well, certainly not Adolf Hitler, for sure. Why not? Of course, you know... Well, lots of Germans yeah. think he... Lots of Germans at the time... At the time, yeah. Sunil, lots yeah. of Germans thought he was great. You've got to be. You've got to remember the values of the time, mate. You can't. You can't judge yeah, him yeah. by today's standards. Lots of Germans thought yeah. he was great. So why don't we put up a statue of him, or keep up a statue of him? Well, I don't think that's acceptable in any anybody, any any country, anywhere. Why not? Well, because, you're, you're, you're judging him by modern values. Well, I, I don't think he was venerated by by many people. You know. You don't think Adolf Hitler was venerated by many people. No, okay. I no, he, well, I, I, I think, think your so, original yeah. point was going to lead you to somewhere like that, but I didn't think you were going to no, get no, there quite no, so no, clumsily. No, no, what I'm is, no carry on, of course. There is, there is history, and a lot of people you speak to say you can't erase my history. No one's erasing. They, they pulled down a statue, mate, and you today know a hell of a lot more about Edward Colston than you did two years ago. Absolutely. So you've actually got more history as a consequence of the yeah. statue being pulled down. So the history that yeah. you rang in to support and be in favour of has been enhanced and improved by the removal of the statue that you think should not have been pulled down. Have a great day. And that is the question, if you're thinking of ringing in, that everyone will have to answer at some point. Explain to this little boy here why he has to walk past a statue of someone who presided over the, the murders, essentially, of 19,000 human beings who hail from the same part of the world 
that he hails from could have been your your great great granddad. Why? Why why is there a statue up of someone who presided over mass murder? Can you remember or can you think of any comparable examples? Will Foro is calling us from Dawlish. Hello, Will. Hello. Hi, what did you want to say? I think that an outrageous uh, assault on our civil liberties and freedom has been attached to the coattails uh, of this disease. I certainly do not think uh, people should be penalised in any way for, for not having the vaccination. Uh, uh, for, uh, I, I think it's absolutely outrageous and I, I think it sets a terrible precedent. Mm. What about those who are calling and saying because of the choices of those who are not being vaccinated, there is an extraordinary pressure being put on hospitals, which has denied then treatment and time to those other people who are vaccinated but may need treatment for other things. What about those who are saying that actually workforces are becoming decimated because of the spread of this? It's spreading too quickly right. because all, those right. who are having vaccinations are, are dampening that effect. And if you don't, you're exacerbating the effect. Every winter, every winter, I worked in the NHS for 32 years, every winter, we are told that the NHS is coming under terrible strain, and it is. But it's but it's been the case. It was ever thus. The another another reason why there's pressure on hospitals is because for a number of years now there has been a move to to to, to reduce hospital beds. That is why there appears to be. Uh, an undue strain on the health, on on the centralised hospital system at this time because for many did you, years. Did you hear the programme before Christmas? We had an uh, ICU nurse who was saying actually the numbers that are coming into ICU, even if we have beds for them, we don't have the staff for it. So we have you know you're meant to have one ICU nurse per bed, but she was saying you know as the numbers are coming in and coming in in, in greater numbers, that's just not possible. And that's not something you're waving a magic wand over. It's not a question of just having the beds for them. It's that the trained staff who can look after them. Well, every winter, as far back as I can remember, we have been, we have been told that the NHS is, 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 is not going to be able to cope and, uh, and, and that there's going to be a terrible pressure on beds. And it's, it, it, it's been the same for a number okay. of years now. And th this winter is no exception. OK, well, thank you very much indeed. At six, mounting pressure on the Prime Minister to explain why a party took place at Downing Street during the height of lockdown. Boris Johnson and his wife Carrie are understood to have attended the drinks in the garden in May 2020. Around 100 people were invited. I apologise again, unreservedly, for the upset that these allegations have caused. There's no need for an investigation into the simple, central question today. Did the Prime Minister attend the event in the Downing Street Garden? When the party took place, the streets were still empty. The rules said you could only meet one person from another household. Many families affected by COVID are furious. I'm angry because there was one room for one person and one room for the others. We weren't allowed to be with our loved ones and it's very, very sad. The Metropolitan Police say they are in contact with the government about it. My mother-in-law who died alone. Well, Keep going, well, well, the Paymaster General confirmed that there will be a full and complete disclosure. Good evening. There may have been beautiful sunshine and warm weather across the country on the 20th of May 2020, but today the memories being shared were of an altogether more painful sort. Giving birth without a partner, loved ones dying alone, funerals sparsely attended by decree. But those memories have been met with silence from those behind me who will not explain whether the Prime Minister responded to an invitation by his principal private secretary to 100 people to bring their own booze and enjoy the weather in the garden. And silence, too, for ministers and Conservative MPs who, bar a handful of exceptions, notably failed to come out in defence of the beleaguered Prime Minister. Tonight, it's only just over two years since he won a landslide election. But could this scandal bring Boris Johnson down? I'm a massive Boris fan, a Brexiteer, voted Tory, and I will be voting in the next election. I'm not bothered in the slightest of these parties, because I've got to be honest, uh, I'd be a hypocrite. I broke the rules. The first month, right, when we didn't know nothing about it, I stuck to the rules. Uh, once I found out after a month ago, after the first month, that we was absolutely fine, it was generally 
if you if you fit, no underlying problems, ninety five percent of you're going to be okay. I got on my life. I went to a few parties. I went to barbecues. I saw Karen on seeing my parents twice a week. I'm sorry if you decide to sit indoors for eight months like a scared rabbit and did see anyone. More for you, more for you. I I, I got on with my, my life. Uh, I still did, did the usual things, social dishes, wash my hands. But other than that, I just got on with my life. I'm in loads of WhatsApp groups. Everyone was going parties. I've got a friend who's a cab driver. And last New Year's Eve, not the one just gone, he worked. he done more money going to house parties and taking people to raves than any other year. So all these people ringing up Holy than Val, or we stuck in, we stuck to the rules. And I was locked up for eight months. Ago. I'm sorry. You know, so how can I care, care, moan about Boris? I'm not bothering in the slightest. Uh, I will be voting for him next election, um, and he's on the Brexit tier. And I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about these small little things. It just doesn't bother me. I mean, I can understand why people are upset. If you've lost a family member, you couldn't go to a funeral. You'd be saving. But I've got to be honest. It's, it's not bothering me. It's not cutting through with me. And I'll be voting Boris next uh, and the Tories next election. But you, you've mentioned Brexit. What's that got to do with this? Well, no, I'm just saying I was a Brexit sport and a Tory sport. I, I voted in, uh, for Brexit, but also I, I, I like the Tory parties and I thought Labour were useless. But I'm just saying I voted in because of that and I also thought Tories were a better, better option. But I'm saying on, on the party thing, it won't stop me because he's been caught out with these parties. It's, it's, it's not bothering me. And I'll say I can't hit the... And you, you, uh, I mean, but if you're a Tory I, I supporter... I broke the rules. Yeah, if you're a Tory supporter, presumably you believe in the rule of law. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, I suppose yeah. the rule of law, but we bent rules, yeah. everyone bent rules, they did. No, you, did, you, did, you, didn't, you didn't bend them, Lee, you, you flagrantly broke them, and you seem actually proud of the fact that you broke them. Well, yeah, because I thought that was ridiculous, you can't sit on a bench, you've got to be two metres, I thought, I thought those useless rules Sorry, in the first place. I thought, I thought you said you did socially distance. Well, no, I did socially distance, but I'm saying I broke the rules as in I went, you weren't supposed to go more than six and house parties, that sort of thing. I so tried to social distance when I was in the house and washed my hands and keep that distance, and I put a mask on if I, if I went to a supermarket, that sort of thing. But I still bent the rules, like, oh, you, you weren't supposed to go with more than six, mix out the household, that sort of thing. That's what I'm saying. And, and as I say, you seem quite proud of it. Uh, well, I wouldn't say quite, quite proud of it. I, I thought it was just uh, using using common sense. You could still break the rules, but use a bit of common sense. Don't get close uh, and wash your hands and all that. So still try. How, how is it commonsensical to go to a party with lots of people? Well, when I say lots of people, we're, we're not talking about a house party like 150 people. Like it might be 10 or 15 people. Big garden, easy social distance, that that sort of thing. But by the letter of the law, you're still breaking them. That's that's what I mean. I, I'm my fundamental point is I'm not bothered about these parties, and I can't be hypocritical because I bent the rules myself. Went to a few house parties. I still see my parents. Uh, social distance, of course. Uh, kept uh, have you, have you been out. vaccinated? Yep, all three jabs. Done the booster jab, and I'll uh, I'll take the next jab. Yep, I'm not an anti vaxxer well, uh, So well, thank I'll goodness for that. It. No, I will <laughs> do that. But I'm not. But how can I slag off Boris Johnson? For having parties, and also you, you, people forgot to remember, we had VE Day. Would you remember around about that time where this party was on the twentieth? There was loads of street parties, loads of them everywhere. So all this idea that there was everyone stuck to the rules, there was all it wasn't. There was parties going on everywhere. So it seems yeah, to me that it doesn't, it doesn't, ju it bashers, doesn't justify them. Or remainers, basically. It doesn't justify <laughs> them. Joanna's a new caller in Cheshunt in Hertfordshire. Hi, hi, Joanna. Hello, Tom. Hi, far away. Well, are you still clutching your pearls, Tom? Go on. How ridiculous is this conversation? Mm -hmm. With all the things that are going on in the world at the moment, we are talking about something that happened, what, 18 months ago? Mm -hmm. And can I just point out, I think, I believe this gathering of 40 people outside was on the 20th of May. Mm -hmm. Is that correct, Tom? Yes. A mere... Twelve days after, half the UK was celebrating or commemorating VE Day. Mm -hmm. Out in their gardens, down their roads, drinks in hand. Well, some people might have been, yeah. A lot of people were. Yes. Now, how many people were fined for celebrating or commemorating VE Day? No idea. How many people were arrested for commemorating VE Day? No idea. Well, why weren't you so concerned about it 18 months ago? Well, if we're allowed to break, break the rules and the rules don't have well, any... Well, clearly we were any, allowed to break well, the rules. Well, why did the rules, rules exist then? on VE Day. Well, why have them at all? Pardon? Why have them at all? Because 
overall, rules are a good idea. Right, just... But are... every now and again, an exception to the rule is no bad thing. And the Downing Street party on the 20th yeah, of May is one I'm of them. quite happy. With all that that man has gone through, I'm quite happy to give him a pass on this occasion and the other 39 people that attended the, the event okay. as well. Are you are you similarly happily are you similarly happy to give him similarly a happy to give him a pass on on not telling the truth about there were parties? Well, it I, I think he'll probably dodge that one on the basis that it wasn't actually a party. Right. And what do you think? Do you think it was a party or wasn't a party? I wouldn't call that a party. No. What would you call it? I would call it a post, a, an evening post work get together, a bit of a chin wag, a bit of a drink, a bit of a canapé, as you as yeah. you mentioned. Socialising. I wouldn't call it a party. Any more, really, than I would say that the gatherings in the streets of the UK to commemorate, they weren't really a party. But it was a way for people, maybe, to get together, feel as though they were part of the human race and commemorate a special occasion. Not a party, really. So you th but I'm saying, if you're going to attack one, yes. be consistent and attack the other. Uh -huh. And I'd love anybody that did commemorate VE Day to ring up and justify what they did. And do you think that... So you're happy I'm to... Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm getting really, really annoyed I about can tell. this, Tom. I can tell. Because I do enjoy listening to you, but you have really got to me this evening. Cumbria Police on VE Day uh, issued 42 fines for lockdown breaches that day. Mm -hmm. um, eight Humberside police officers were injured on that day as well. Right. So if, if police in Cumbria were able to issue 42 fines for yeah, lockdown but I breaches think on that day... police in Cumbria maybe were just following orders. Right. Well, maybe, the law, they uh, were... They were can, they, you, can you give me, for instance, I'm in Hertfordshire. Yes. How many um, fines were issued in Hertfordshire? Well, well, well I'll, I'll get the team to try and look it up. But if people, are being, if people are being fined for having celebrations or outdoor V Day, day style... And I should think there were a lot of people events. also that had these commemorations and yes, drinks sure. in, the, in the road That's and what fine. have you. But if they're being that fined for that... weren't actually fined. But if they're being fined for that, if people being caught... A fine for it, which you, I suspect, yeah, Joanna would agree called, with, because that's and consistent. Presumably, had the Downing Street party crowd been caught, they would have been fined. Well, they've, been, they've been caught now. Uh, yeah, retrospectively. But the law applies retrospectively too. Um, you've got me there, Tom. Thank you for the call. Alex is a new caller, Carl Shelton. Hi, Alex. Hello there. How are you doing? Yeah. Far away. Oh, good. I'm just finding up about the garden party yes. with Boris Johnson. Were you there? I was just going to say, he's our prime minister. Uh -huh. If he wants a garden party, have a garden party. Right. And what if you okay. wanted a garden party? I'm just saying, like, what do you think in the White House? Do you think they're, you know, they're all drinking with each other? And Merkel, she had a few glue vines over Christmas with her mates, you know. What? They're the government. They're, they run the country. So they're allowed to do what they like? Not what right? they like, but, you know... Well, why weren't you allowed to do that? Why couldn't you have a table set out with... Well, I could have if I wanted to. No, well, you weren't it's allowed illegal, to. But, yeah. Well, because that's your government. But why didn't you? Because I respect what they said, but they all need to right. get together. So why, why put couldn't... Put their heads together, didn't they? Why couldn't you expect them to follow the rules that they told you to live by? Well, I do. Right, so why is it? So why do you think they can... Because that's our government. Why do you think they can be allowed to do that? we'll self-isolate. How's our government going to get on with that? Well, they can go into work. It's nonsense. In the same way that teachers went to work and hospital staff went to work. Yeah, now look at our kids. Now, come on. The government, they need to be together. It doesn't matter. It doesn't count. That's fine. They're allowed to be together. They can be at work together. That's okay. They were. No, but it doesn't count. What do you mean it doesn't count? You need some people, you know, to run it. So it doesn't count. What do you mean? It, it, what's the it that you think doesn't count? It doesn't count for them to have to isolate and run away and stuff like that. Alex, they were, they were working in Downing Street together, yeah, as they needed right. to do. 
But so were nurses. Nurses and nurses and doctors. Hang on. Nurses and doctors went into hospitals to work because they had to. Teachers went into school to teach because they had to. People who had to go to work had to go to work. So why couldn't they set up a table in the garden and have drinks with their work colleagues afterwards? Because they're not running the country. Right. Yeah. They're not running the country. You know, it's... Come on. It, It doesn't make any sense, your argument. So... Just to get this right, you think that the people who make the rules are allowed to break the rules because they make them? Oh, you can turn it like that, but you need some people... <laughs> I'm just trying to, fo- I'm just trying to work out what you're saying. ...and do stuff. You know but what I mean? yeah, but the doing stuff Come is on. different. It's a silly argument. The doing stuff, the working, I get, I understand. Running That's right. Yeah. I get it. Of course, of course. But the stuff that they're not allowed to do, by their own rules, is to go outside in great numbers, get the booze out and have a lovely knockabout session at 6pm in a lovely evening in May, when the rest oh, of us were told really? we could Really? Was it a piss-up from the morning to night? No, no it was after 6pm. They've had a drink afterwards. They've probably, you know, done some stuff. But why didn't, why didn't you? Sorry? Why didn't you? Because I haven't got Putin's number and nothing like that, you know. I can't, like, sort well, problems out. That's what they've been doing all day. Come on. So because you don't make the rules, you're not allowed to break them? Ah. Oh. Yeah, I see where you're going there, but... Do you on. see how I'll, idiotic I'll you, what, you they sound? They can break the rules. <laughs> like, the White House, like, Rush, everyone breaks the rules, the governments, because some people need to break the rules. That's that. And if you don't understand that, then... Are you normally this deferential? Are you normally this sort I'm of... I'm not, actually. No? But, no, I'm not. So if no, somebody else who makes the rules in another part of your life, I don't know, say your boss or whatever, if they're allowed to do things that they tell you you're no, not allowed to do... You think you... These people are running the country. I don't care. Sometimes... I don't care that they're running the country. They're telling me the and my family you and you and your the, family you know, you've got that you're not allowed to do things. Sometimes. Or if things don't happen. Come on, you know. Do you think the Queen should have been allowed to have as many people as she wanted around her for her husband's funeral? I like going the Queen, cos I love the Queen. <laughs> well, do you think she should have been able to break the rules? Uh, no, well, I'm not no. getting into that. Why not? No, nah, because... Cat got nah. your tongue? No? No, <laughs> no. Bit cowardly. She's a real lady. Bit cowardly of you. You can pass <laughs> comment on everyone else but the Queen. Out, isn't it? <laughs> no, I won't speak about her. Right. Left. Are you sure you wanted to ring up the radio station and make this point tonight? Yeah. Are you sure? Positive. Because you sound a bit... like... well, you don't know what you're talking about. Okay. You sound like you haven't got the foggiest idea why this is so anger-inducing for so many people. You seem mm-hmm. to think that because those people in charge were in charge, they're able to break the rules that they set for everybody else. Yep. And um, because, I still say now, feet on crazy, but they've got the right to do that. They've got the right to do that? They have. Do you think... Because if something do you think, don't break the rules... Yeah. <laughs> if some people don't break... won't happen in life. If some Come people on. don't break the rules, then what happens? Sometimes people have to break the rules. To do what? To, because rules have been set up, and sometimes they're not right, are they? So these, will, these rules because, weren't because, right? Like, silly rules. Yeah, so these rules weren't right. The rule that prevented you from being exactly able to... That. Yeah, so why didn't you break it? No, well, because I didn't want to. You thought it... I wouldn't. Because you thought, it was, you thought it was wrong to break the rule, the silly rule that yes, they I set did, up. Yeah. Right, so you thought it was wrong. No, you're a bigger man than me to break the rules. Someone that, yeah... <laughs> You break the rules for reasons, don't you? Are you, are you, are you winding me up? Is this, is this like no, a, no, 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 is this like a wind up? I believe this. No, 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 no. Who did you vote for at the last election? Out of interest. <laughs> well, I won't tell you that either. Why? Why? Do why? You I don't. That? I don't think the Queen was on the ballot paper. Who? Who did you vote for? Oh come on! No, no. Right. But I'm a normal person. Yep. But I just don't believe everyone thinks, you know, 
you can't do this, that's illegal, they've had a garden party and that. They're running our country, mate. You know, if they want to do that, they can. All right. Alex, uh, you, you've had a, we've had a good go at it. You've taken it on. You've given us your view. That's what it's all about. I'm grateful you did. Thank you for calling us. Brendan has called from Ricelip. Hi, Brendan. Hi, Sheila. Yeah, I'd just like to say, I think this whole argument shows the kind of the moral state that this country has got into. I mean, we're talking about, like, these people are working hard to save lives. And yet, you know, we've got, like, the liberal left um, you know, and that includes the media, basically trying to pull them down when they're doing their best. All they're trying to do, like, is have a bit of a rest <coughs> while, whilst they're working hard. And, like, and like the Liberal left, if, if they really cared about human lives, then they wouldn't support abortion. And so, to me, that just shows the kind of hypocrisy of what's going on here. And people are getting so worked up about these people who are trying to save lives you know, have an arrest, and yet, you know, wh where's all where's all the outrage about people actually being killed um, by I ideologies that come from the liberal left? You know, like what's going on here? Um, did you hear my program yesterday by any chance? I didn't know. Oh, because the final caller to the program was an NHS consultant who was working my guess would be a lot harder than most people on that day and during that time. Um, and his view was that that party was wrong and his view that was, was had he invited a hundred of his colleagues to meet on the grassy quad outside the hospital and have a party, bring, bring your own bottle, he would rightly have been sacked. Yeah, but this that is like a social event outside. This is like people within... It's not. It's in the work. It's not. It's in the work. No, this is this is not outside. It was in the hospital grounds, same as Boris Johnson's working offices and garden is in Downing Street grounds. Exactly the same. A workplace full of people working hard to save lives. Yeah, if, if people if people are outside and they're having a few drinks on the lawn outside the hospital, what's the problem with that? It was against the law at the time to, to gather in those numbers. Well, they're not. You know, like if you're just meeting. That is probably like a public place anyway. No, it's, it's not. not. It's not. Area, it's a workplace. It? It's a workplace. It's, okay, their, it's so, their workplace. Okay, so that is a law. But what, what about... Um, and Boris Johnson people, and his team broke about, it by the looks of it, didn't they? What about the moral law of people actually being killed? People, like 200,000 people are killed by abortion every year. Is this a conversation... Like, all right, is this a conversation about abortion or is it a conversation about no, the it's pandemic a, it's laws? About the moral... It's about the moral state. Like, we're, people are getting all up in arms about some people who are trying to save lives having, like, a social event, and yet they're OK, they're perfectly OK with, like, 200,000 other people being killed. So, so you, so so, you so do... Where, where, where's the justice all right. in that? All right, so you, so you do want a conversation around the morality around abortion whilst pretending to want a conversation around uh, the morality of what Boris Johnson and his team did on the 20th of May 2020. Um, I'm not quite sure they hang together that easily, those two things, but I think my example of the NHS consultant and what happened in Downing Street on May the 20th, 2020, hangs together very well indeed. Thank you very much indeed for your call. Phil's in Stratford-upon-Avon. Phil. Oh, hi, Tom. Hi. Um, I've been listening to you... Um... You've been very dismissive and patronising about towards anybody who disagrees with you, and I've really had it. Um, uh, this Thursday um, will be the year. Uh, will be the. Uh, it will be a year to the day since my mother died in a hospice ward um, of the effects of COVID. Um, she actually caught at the end of April and uh, recovered by the 15th of May, mm. but it wrecked her insides, and by I'm January so she died rather nastily, I'm and sorry. I had to be with her. Now, I should be one of the people having a go at Boris and the government for their conduct and the way they, the way they handle things, um, but I just don't get your argument, because if this wasn't reported for 18 months, how, how, how is it relevant how is the party relevant? How is the party relevant? Because it was the British public who spread COVID and killed 150,000 people. And if it wasn't reported and just till just now, 
then how has that, uh, what happened then, how, how does it have any bearing on the way the British public behaved in the 18 months since? So w- what effect has that party had? Really, in real life yes, is your question. It, it's only just been reported. Sure. So the, you, this, this argument... Well, the answer is, is probably trying, not very much. Pro- the answer is probably not very much. This argument is trying to absolve the public from their own um, delinquent behaviour in the meantime. No, it's and not. And you're backing that up. No, it's illogical and it's idiotic. In what way am I backing that up? You, you're trying to skewer the government. You're trying to politically weaponise COVID to get at Boris Johnson and the government. I, I, I think that the people who made the rules that we all had to follow should have abided by the rules that they made others follow. I think but that's, that's a angels pretty reasonable on the head principle. of a pin, isn't it? Because no, it's not. If it's it the fundamental at point. The time, it would be relevant. It would have. It would. You would have a point if it had been reported at the time. But it's just been reported today. Okay. So it's got absolutely no bearing on how the government handled the situation. How do we? Okay. So, so the thing to say from that is, does the fact that the government have been saying for weeks and weeks and weeks that there were no parties? bear any relevance to this, when there was one, at least one, probably more? No, they, well, OK, yeah, so they aren't, they aren't covered in glory on this. However, well, so they're lying the British, about it? P- pardon? So they've been lying about it? But, yeah? No, the British public are even worse. We have the worst deaths per million in the world, thanks to the delinquency of a certain percentage of the British population who have no right to point the finger at anybody. They're delinquent because they... they in what way were they delinquent, the British public? But, but by by um, just taking the pee out of all the rules about mask wearing, right. about ten uh, percent refusing to get vaccinated. Well, you mean like, like the people things. who broke the rules? Compare this couple, compare this country with Japan, who've had yeah. twenty times fewer deaths per million. So just unclear, Phil. The people rules. who broke the rules are delinquents. Hey, the people who broke the rules are yes. delinquent. They help spread COVID. They help kill people. Yes, it's the does public. That therefore the in, public does, has done that. Well, does that therefore they include... They were the ones who resulted in my mother catching COVID and dying of it. Does that therefore include the Downing Street members of staff who broke the rules? No, they aren't. No, I've just said to you, they're not covered in glory, but the public are even worse. Well, why, why are they not as delinquent as the public? This is political weaponisation. Well, hang on, you said virus. that people are delinquent who break the rules... The, the delinquents who broke the rules helped spread COVID. Downing Street staff broke the rules. Why are yes, they also not they delinquent? Did the wrong thing, but so the, why are the they not delinquent? The hypocrisy of you and the public attacking the government at any opportunity on something like this with the greatest of respect, ago, Phil, it's not relevant. With the greatest of respect, if you're saying that the responsibility for people to follow the rules was there and the fact that they didn't meant COVID spread, you agree that the Downing Street staff didn't follow the rules. I don't see how you can say that they're not as delinquent as the British public. OK, let's say they, they are delinquents as well, but how the hell um, have the public got any right to point the finger? And how have you got any right to... Um... Because I didn't break the rules. I followed the rules. OK. Did My you family have followed any, the did rules. Did you have any personal... Um, were you personally affected the way I was by Covid? I'm for- very fortunately, Phil. Very, very fortunately, no. So it's just angels on the head of a pin to you, isn't it? Of course it's not. It's pure theory to you. No, of course it isn't. It's not theory. I completely understand. If anybody the should be blaming the government, ones. it should be me. And I, yeah, well, possibly. But all I think about is the hypocrisy of the British public, the people who didn't wear masks, who didn't do the right thing, and Japan proves it that the the, the rules were correct, that they should have been followed, and we would have been far better off if we had done. It's our public, the behaviour of the public, that's the problem. But could you be certain, Phil, that if we had instituted even stronger rules, tougher rules, longer lockdowns, that the people who made the rules would have followed them too? They wouldn't have been as delinquent. I think that the people who have failed to follow all these rules are just trying to absolve themselves um, by trying to get Boris, basically. Well, even his own staff, even possibly the Prime Minister himself? is trying to get himself... Sorry, what, what do you mean? You say that this is politically weaponised by the people who didn't follow the rules to try and bring down the government. One of those people may well have been the Prime Minister. Well, how, how, 
how is he... This hasn't been... It wasn't reported, so how is he personally responsible for 150,000 deaths in the meantime? But you... But, Phil, you tell me, you're the one saying that the people who didn't follow the rules and who helped spread it are the ones that, that killed people. I see. So we can... So the whole... So the British public can, like, scapegoat Boris Johnson for their behaviour. Is that what you're saying? No, you can't blame Boris Johnson for your own behaviour. But you can certainly look at Boris Johnson's behaviour and breaking of the rules, particularly yeah, well, if you think the breaking of the rules... a lot of opportunists ru- using uh, the government and Boris to scapegoat their own behaviour in the past 18 months. OK. Phil, we'll leave it there. I am... Genuinely, sir, I am terribly, terribly sorry that you lost you, your mother, particularly in those circumstances. Jill's calling from Edam in Surrey. Jill, I think you're a new caller. Um, hold on. Uh, hello, yes, I am. Well, you're very welcome, and I'm Jill. I'm ringing because yeah. I think uh, by a lot of the staff, yeah. um, mainly Martin Reynolds, is cons- conspiracy against the Prime Minister. Now, hang on, let me just uh, stop there, Jill, because... The ha- Jill, 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 hang on, we've got to explain who Martin Reynolds is. He, was the, he is the Prime Minister's principal private secretary who put out the email inviting people to that party back in May 2020 when it was nice and sunny. Staff saying, let's get a, a get together in yeah. the garden, yeah. not the Prime Minister. Mm. Then I think he sent somebody upstairs to take a photo, which seems very fishy to me. Why bother to take a photo? Yeah, but why did Boris, and at the why table, did Boris there Johnson? Carrie and there was the Prime Minister. Yeah, why did he go to the Martin party? Reynolds and Dominic yeah. Cummings. Yeah. Now, it wouldn't surprise me that they're both in cahoots with each right. other because Dominic Cummings loathes the Prime Minister he does. and Martin Reynolds. Probably, I'd stake my life on it. He's a Remainer, so he would love to. Actually, he's not. He's not actually. He's one of the few civil servants at the Foreign Office who voted Leave. He's a civil servant, Jill. And that 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 that. photograph, and that photograph you're alluding to, is of a different party. There are so many, Jill. The party you're referring to is the the one he went to for 25 minutes. The one where they were sitting, the Prime Minister sitting in the garden. That's a different one. Six o'clock in the evening to have a well-earned rest with his wife. And at the table, there was Martin Reynolds, and there was Dominic Cummings. That was in 2020, right. yeah. I believe. Yeah. Even if it is a conspiracy, does it matter? The Prime Minister broke uh, the rules. Yes, I think it is. But because what's it, I think he's yeah. been set up by certain sections mm. in Number 10 okay. who, absol- who were Remainers and who absolutely loathed the Prime Minister. Okay. Right. And I think it's very bad. I'm not saying there wasn't any get-togethers, yeah. but he's been blamed for something mm. that the civil servants that work there were doing because they fancied a, a drink after a hard day's work and everybody's saying, oh, it's terrible, it's terrible. They shouldn't have been having a rest. They shouldn't have been having a drink. It's ridiculous. No, what they shouldn't have been doing was breaking the rules, um, Jill, which they, can't, they which were imposed on the rest the of the country. Yes, but that's, Jill, together. the rules are the rules. The rules were quite yeah, clear. No, Jill, to, there's no, 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 Jill, Jill, Jill there's no but. Jill, Jill, there is no but. That was a breach. Jill, that was a breach. at the end of the working day, <sighs> They said, right, let's have a little relax Jill, for half Jill, hour and let's have Jill, a drink. could you pause for a second? They were in clear breach of the government rules, which said at the outset, even at work, you cannot mix, you've got, you cannot be in a gathering of more than two people outside. There were about 30 people at that gathering. It was against the rules, Jill, but thank you for your call. Bunny is in Putney. Hi, Bunny. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm extremely well. Far away. Good. Well, when I first phoned, which was a while ago, so I sorry. wanted to talk about Boris, and I still do. But you've also been talking about Prince Andrew, and I'd love to talk about him as well. But Boris, I, I, I voted for him for one reason only, which was to get the Brexit thing sorted out once and for all and stop us all fighting and all this terrible nasty uh, sort of atmosphere in the country uh, whether you believe in Brexit or not and I think he did a good job mm-hmm. so are you there? Just about, yep Oh, okay um, so um, so I think that's what he was I think that's what he was voted in for mm-hmm. Um, recently, the party, uh... Hello? Can you hear me? Yep. Hello? Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, good. 
Um, the, the party, the parties recently, um, yes, they were wrong, but they, they weren't, I don't think they were as bad as people make out. And I don't think that a, a huge percent of people in Britain were obeying the laws. So Boris is being caught out. And that's going to really mess up his career. But um, it, when you see the photograph that somebody took, they were in little clumps of socially distanced, uh, you know. I think you're referring to the one on the terrace, the yeah, works the, the drinks, the cheese one, Yeah, the and in yeah. the garden, yeah. yeah. So, I know it's wrong, I know it's, you know, and there's no excuse for it, but I, I don't know, I mm. just I just don't think it's, it, it's not the end of the world, it's not murder, but obviously it, it's Hello? because he's the PM and because he's made these laws, but I mean, they let, Cap, they let, um, what was his name, his little sleazy... Um, chap, you know, the, his the, little sleazy cat. Hello, his, his, is it a bad line? Funny, thank you. I know he's a more.